Hi guys, hi team, hi everybody. Um, today's talk's a little bit fun, I guess. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit more about the design. Um, I want to talk to you about the voice in your head. Okay? Many of us have become aware of that voice. Many of us have realized that that voice is responsible for how we see the world. But many of us have not figured out how to reach silence or how to detach from that experience. And that's the difference between one existence and the other, between 3D and 5D. They both exist within one another, right? But the difference is, in one option, everything in the world is happening to us. We are conv completely convinced that the story that is an inside our head is our reality, okay? It's as real as it's gonna get, and the reason that I wanna talk to you guys about this is because I don't agree with spiritual bypassing, okay? You know, when you go, nee, 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 no, it's not happening, it's not happening, I don't wanna look at it, okay? <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? Okay, when we do this, you should understand one thing. What you resist persists, okay? So you will notice that as much as you want to ignore your reality, okay, and you can say as many affirmations as you want, and you can do everything you want, okay, but you will notice that the more you try to ignore what is happening, rather than accepting it to move on, it stays. So you're like this yo-yo that goes in and out of states. In fact, many times what you'll notice is you're able to enter the state for a little while and then whoop, you get yo-yoed back into the old state and you're like, wait, wait, I had it for a second. That is very common, okay? And it happens because we must become aware of the story of the voice in our head. It is the psychobabble that is responsible for, and I say psychobabble, I'm not kidding. Everybody has this psychobabble, okay? But it is responsible for the way that we see the world, okay? All of these universal experiences are happening at once, but it's how we see the world. So for example, COVID exists, okay? But the people that are watching programming who are allowing the world to tell them what is will make themselves and their family susceptible to illness because they're agreeing to the media and they're agreeing to make themselves smaller than they are, okay? The opposite reality also exists. The opposite reality or the true absolute reality is that you are simply agreeing to attach to that perception or there are a billion other perceptions. For example, okay, I can walk into the bubonic plague. I don't care. I'm not catching it. I'm not of this world anymore. I use my body to have fun in this world, but I am not susceptible to the programming. I make my own, and as long as I have that power, I can walk this world like Jesus. And I am not special. I have the same ability we all have because we are all made in God's image. So I'm not denying the things that happen. In fact, a lot of the times when I try my best to say, hey, it's your story. It's your story. That's the only reason people appear that they do. It's your story. And I keep saying, listen, all bodies are illusions. I swear to God, they're illusions so that you can see your story made real. They're all your bodies. But if you would like to participate in the 3D world of your own accord, you absolutely can. That's why we're here. It is not meant to be bypassed. However, you should know before you trap yourself in a 3D circumstance that you have the ability to come in and out based on your story and what you believe to be real. 
okay? So here's the catch, you guys, okay? Everything is you. The only thing we ever need to heal in our lives is the separation from God. So what do I mean by that? Well, God is everything. Everything. It's me. It's Chaylin who's watching. It's Alyssa who's watching. It's everything. Okay? So, let's say I'm going to interact with Chaylin. I'm going to be like, hey, baby. How you doing? Okay? And I'm going to talk to her. All right? As long as I do not treat her like I'm separate from her, she and I will have a harmonious conversation. Now, if I were in a relationship with someone, as long as I don't treat myself as separate from that relationship, I will have a harmonious relationship. Because I'm always mindful of what my inner voice is saying, and I'm always directing it, and I'm always making sure that what I believe and what I say are one unified thing so that I can enter from one state into the next, okay? I want you all to remember that creation is finished. I can't say this enough. There is everything already exists and we simply enter from one state to another all the time, okay? That's it, all right? However, when you enter these states, understand that they come with predetermined set of circumstances so that you can play out your experience. That's why people who talk about experiences being good or bad haven't yet understood that nothing is good or bad. Be honest, it's just an experience we're having, right? All right, so please remember when in relationships, when in your platonic uh, interactions, when you're about to judge something, okay? Please remember that that inner voice is dictating, okay? The ego tried a very long time ago. I'll, I'll tell you how the separation began, okay? We had this thought. Every single human being in the world had this thought. What would it be like to be separate from everything, okay? So we set out on this discovery, all right? The design is so simple. And along the way, we felt guilty because who wants to leave perfection, right? And so our ego said, hey, you know what? Daddy is gonna be really mad because you decided to leave Eden. You know that prodigal son moment? So instead of doing that, why don't you come with me and you'll be safe? And that's where the insanity began. That's where the true insanity because that's when you became enslaved to the voice in your head that dictates its preferences, that dictates everything. If you notice, if it's hot or cold outside and you dislike either one, it's just hot or cold, right? But if you dislike it, the inner voice has no problem telling you what's wrong. And it goes on to a tirade of what's wrong with it. You know, if you like it, all that's right with it. But in either case, it is not anything more than the voice inside of your head controlling your experience. And what I'm trying to get people to understand is that there is a way to live when you are not enslaved to your voice, to your inner voice, to the inner voice that's dictating how we should behave and how we shouldn't and what should we interact and what everything means. What I'm trying to say is what the Bible said is that we have never left Eden and that our ability to name things has always been in our hands. It is a universal process, but we must become present to what our inner conversation is. And that is the difference. It is the difference because you will treat things very differently when you know everything is you. I know it's tempting to decide that something is apart from you, but if you want a better marriage, don't treat this person as apart from you. You want a better relationship, don't treat this person apart from you. Learn to see behind the veil of illusion. You are 
the remote control. You want to be the intelligence behind your material world? First understand that your story is the one that's creating everything for you. So you either have conscious control of that voice or you don't. But that is not to say and not to disregard your experiences, okay? Every single human being on earth fell asleep to a storyline, okay? This egoic way of interpreting things. And it got stronger throughout time as you developed a sense of your preferences, non-preferences, what you decided things mean, blah, da, blah, da, blah, da, blah. So all of this is going on. And you are either subject to that or it is subject to you. And a lot of times Einstein, what he would say was that we have it all backwards, that the subconscious should be our servant and somehow we are subject to it. And that is true. That is the ruling class elite or the real meaning of being subject to our story. And you will know the difference. You will always know the difference when the world appears to be happening to you. That's because you can inverse that because the opposite is so true. The problem is when we're stuck in victim mentality, when we don't wanna take responsibility for our lives, when it's easier to say they did this to me, they did that to me, they did this, they did this, and she did that, and he did that, it's so much easier to say those things than it is to take responsibility for why things happen. But remember, once you take responsibility, I'll reiterate this, this is not about guilt because you have to eliminate that sense of guilt, okay? We can't get mad for what we didn't know, just like we can't get mad at others when they don't know what they don't know, right? But what we can do is live by example and share how we can alter our lives. We can show people that no one is actually stuck in anything, that their, that their inner story, their inner conversation is responsible, okay? So I like to think of this as the surrender experiment. And a lot of people probably may or may not have the proverbial balls to live this way, okay? I know Jen, who's watching, has those, okay? She has this ability to follow her heart, regardless of what happens, she will do what her heart says and not what her rational mind says, okay? so. Very few people have that ability, but I will tell you this, okay? Your heart has extra brain sensory neurites, so it's another brain. It also is the seat, your chakra center, energy vortex, of the place that sits right in the middle, square dab in the middle, of the spiritual world and the material world. Therefore, your heart can see what you cannot see with your physical eyes. To be honest, if you only use your eyes to see, you're very blind. I know that sounds contradictory, and yet I'm telling you, you are. You are blinded by what you think is real. This is the material veil, and your mind creates that material veil, and until you realize that your mind is creating that material veil, you will remain blinded to what's in front of your face, okay? Your heart has the ability to see beyond that. So no matter how solid you think an item is, okay, your heart sees through that, okay? Now, your brain on the other hand, and this is, these are things that I'm gonna be covering in my class, so I'm giving you guys previews of things that I'm going to be teaching more in depth, okay? Giving you a taste. Your brain on the other hand has collected all of your experiences, can only tell you what you've been through, and has collected your past data. It is helpful to a certain degree because you will know what is possible within these parameters, okay? But there comes a time in everyone's life when we must choose between what our heart knows and what our head knows. And that's where we have an opportunity to either miss the mark or ride the wave. Yeah? <laughs> miss the mark or ride the wave. Go with the grain or go against the grain, okay? Our, our mind can only give you based on past experiences. Our heart, on the other hand, knows the zero point field, knows everything exists, and is not subject to 
what we know okay this is your miracle making machine so those of us who have the ability to live outside of our head rationale have the ability to make miracles to do and live the life that they've always wanted why because quite honestly your heart being the seed of your desire is dictating really in the end how you live right these desires come of the father and of the father means they were already given for you ever even thought about it okay so if that's what's happening with you guys your heart is registering what is so now you have a desire okay and you think the desire comes from you no it came from God it was already given now your job in the 3d world is to learn how to use this in your favor and we are all told to be thankful place a hand on our heart believe it's already done come to the kingdom correct and pray as if it already is that is our job and the rest is to make sure that our faith is not dead by making sure that whatever we do in the world is in alignment with what we're saying. So for example, if right now it doesn't feel like we have any money, this is an example, okay? Um, and suddenly we start applying these things and suddenly money just starts flowing, okay? It starts coming in and we're really excited and we're like, woo! And then on some level, we catch ourselves being afraid to spend it. Now I never use that word actually, I say circulate. Money and spend don't go together. We circulate our money, so it always comes back. But if we fear that, then we're still stuck in a poverty mentality, okay? And then your assets will leak out as quickly as they came in. That is how a lottery winner does not remain wealthy unless this lottery winner has become wealthy in mind and a lot of the times that is not the case so then it doesn't matter and they will realize that the only reason that um, their life looks the way that it does is because this is their poverty mindset that is the only reason when people say all those sob stories when they're like yeah I, I was a millionaire for like three years and then it all went away but then you have people who have that lottery win and so much more and they're able to keep it and the reason they're able to keep it is their mindset the circumstance has nothing to do with it whether they won the money whether they earned the money or whether it earned you know it was earned through their efforts doesn't matter okay it's your ability to maintain the wealth mindset that keeps the wealth in your pocket same thing with relationships when you know you are the one okay it doesn't matter which body comes into your illusion they'll all tell you there's something special about you there's something special about you I want you I want only you this is very normal for someone who knows many of us we experience this a lot you know and it's almost as if it's, it's a funny thing I want to say because it becomes our normal and then the people that don't know what that's like can look on and resent this. You know, they look on and they're like, well, I'm glad your life wasn't hard. You know how often I get that? And I just laugh. Hello? My life has not been easy. Do you think that all of those experiences that I had growing up were easy? Oh my God, we can trade war stories if you want. But the difference is this, the war stories created me now. I don't regret them. I don't regret how I grew up. I don't care about the abusive father. I don't care about the mom that was depressed, that had no idea who I was and still doesn't. Yeah, I don't care about these things because all of these things were characters in the story that made Cindy, Cindy. And I love that. It's a radical type of self-acceptance when you're not saying, oh, woe is me, mommy did me wrong, and so did my daddy. Okay? You need to get over that. You didn't, you really do. You need to get over that. Because you are not there physically anymore. 
and you have the ability to teach yourself how far you have grown. Nothing is more exciting than watching your own trigger come through you and you responding differently this time. It is the most empowering feeling in the world. Not only that, when it loses its charge, you're no longer triggered, like ever. It, it doesn't bother you. So now then you start walking around the way that I do, <laughs> where very few things bother me. And if they do, I still have the ability to take this on, okay? So I'm gonna give you another example, a very painful one for me, okay? My daughter um, can say very hurtful things, okay? Now there are two ways I can do that. I can say, okay, my daughter's a little brat. <laughs> and go on my tirade, okay? I could do that, I really can, all right? But that would be incorrect, 100% incorrect, because she is future me, she doesn't know what she doesn't know, and she doesn't realize that she's simply playing out the script. When she says what she says, I am basically on the receiving end of what I did to my mother, and since I gave birth to my mother, my daughter, I will be on the receiving end of my own crap. Now, am I playing victim or am I taking responsibility for how things happen? Do you see the difference? I'm not denying that that thing happened. I'm not spiritually bypassing. I'm giving you the explanation so that you're freed from the pain. In my case, yes. I was on the receiving end of the same crap I did my mother. It was very humbling experience. It's like, oh yeah, mom, I can see your point of view now. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> kind of moment, do you understand? But that's the difference. That's the difference. So you're not triggered by people anymore if you understand how the illusion was made. We are always on the receiving end of what we're thinking, of how we judge things. Everything is an echolocation and everything is a relationship with yourself. And you're only freed when you understand this. Anytime, say you have a boyfriend named Mitch, you have a boyfriend named uh, Justin, you have a boyfriend named whatever, uh, CJ, whatever, it doesn't matter, okay? You have this boyfriend or you have this girlfriend named Kelly or this, you know, whatever. You understand where I'm going with this, okay? These two characters, are you you are only in a relationship with yourself you are learning what to do and how to deal with what's going on behind the veil okay your veil is caused by your story so until you become present to your story you will not understand this is the reason that you fall into a pattern and suddenly at some point, when you fall into a pattern, whether it's taking you 10 years, 20 years, or 15 years, five years, two years, to realize that you've realized that you're, you've, you're falling into this pattern, sooner or later, you have to take responsibility for that and say, okay, I'm the only common denominator here. <laughs> Humbling moment. We must all be humbled this way. I was. I was. Okay? But... The real power in that is that once you take responsibility for that, these things stop triggering you, which is a very different way to live. The only thing that ever needs to be healed, I'll say it again, is your separation from God. God being everything. Everything at once. When you know you are everything at once, we have no issues. This is a very hard thing to grasp because your entire life you have believed that you are separate. There's a them and a me and a me. But the problem is the idea and the concept of me is the reason for the veil. As I said, the universal design is so simple. It's so simple. The only reason your world exists the way that it does is because your shadow casts upon the universe. And so then you see everything through your filtered shadow your concepts, your ideas, your image, your beliefs, and you will see things through this lens. So everything will appear as you say it is. But there's a quote in the Bible, before you remove the splinter from your brother's eye, you must first remove the plank from your own eye. 
That is to say that until you become present that your story is the reason that everybody is behaving the way that they are in front of you, you will not be able to help your friend. You're going to play inside the drama. What I'm suggesting is you have the ability to live outside of the drama, to understand that before, before you enter any state, you have to be mindful of that voice. You really have to be mindful of that voice. So, the surrender experiment. The surrender experiment. Would entail living by Jen, who's watching, okay? Would mean that you suspend whatever your voice is telling you, the inner voice in here, and you simply deal with what's in front of you. Whatever comes to you, deal with it, and before you judge it as good or bad and put a preference on the experience, simply say yes and go through the motions anyway, okay? You will find that the world is set up way better than your preferences, okay? So for example, you guys, you want to come to the kingdom, so you bring your little chest to God, okay? And you're like, okay, God, I'm ready for you to fill it up. Here's my little chest. I'm ready. Bring it. All right? And God will look at you and be like, yeah, what I have to give you doesn't fit in that chest. I'm giving you the entire universe. I have given it to you. It doesn't fit in there. But... If you want to try to fill the chest up and live from there, you're welcome to. But you are limiting what you can receive because you've already been giving it, given all. You've already been given it. All right? So the surrender idea is deal with what's in front of you, try not to judge it, and say yes because you will find that even the things that you did not want to do because you didn't like the idea of doing it will work out in your favor, okay? I know of people that initially, um, I don't know, initially didn't want to do things and end up being CEOs of their companies because they said yes, because they annoyed the, the voice in their head or they end up creating things that are so far beyond their conception that they understand that this is nothing but God. But we have to learn to stop limiting. So today's idea, briefly, is simply become aware of that voice. That voice has a mind of its own and quite frankly, it's not always sane. It's like we have this evil roommate <laughs> that's so quick to be like, and if you ever listen to it, you will realize that it is insane and we have unconsciously been following it, but we don't have to. We do not have to suffer. We don't have to fit into its narrative and we don't have to accept things as being less than stellar because we are not subject to it. What I'm asking you guys to do is to take the chains off and walk out of your illusion, part the Red Seas of your limitations, conceptual, and trust that on the other side is what you desire. It's a partnership. You don't have to know the how. You don't have to know any of the details. Your job is simply to master your vibration. When you master your vibration, the predetermined set of circumstances that go along with it end up following you, all right? I want you guys to remember that the only one that you need to convince is yourself. Before you work on an outer illusion, remember that the outer illusion was created in here first. You cannot perceive a flower outside of you without holding the image of your flower in your head. You cannot perceive a girlfriend or a boyfriend without holding the image in your head first. That's why telepathy is the most normal skill 
that people will ever have. The only difference is those of us that know that everything is occurring in here can tap into that and can read anyone's mind. You know, I prove it all the time. You know, people is like, ah, get out of my head, Sin. <laughs> I can't help it. You're in my head. <laughs> But these are normal skills, you guys. These are absolutely normal. If you don't realize that you're telepathically in tuned or that you're enslaved to your story, then you're gonna have a tougher life than than you've imagined. You're gonna set up all the circumstances, you're gonna you're gonna stay there. But if you want out, the first step is to become present and aware that the voice in your head is a bit nuts. It's a bit nuts because it's judging what it is and not knowing it and then you repeat it like a parakeet and repair it, right? And it's, these things come out but really you're just listening to the voice in your head and, you know, and sometimes you won't say it but the voice in your head's telling you what is and you haven't even realized that the voice in your head is responsible for the quality of your life. So that's what I wanna talk to you guys about hope this helps and if you haven't realized there's a voice in your head I'm sure that you guys will okay but try and pay attention try and notice because it is responsible for your struggles and it is responsible for your lack of struggles you can have either or and no one has to deny what has happened because I don't do that everything exists what I'm saying is you get to choose you get to choose where you're going to be, you know? You get to choose that. You get to choose how happy it's going to be. You get to choose everything, but you do have a choice. And there is a freedom in understanding that that voice is responsible for the quality of your life and understanding how to direct it, okay? Quite honestly, I'd rather be the slave master than the slave, okay? So... It's now going to do what I say, not the other way around. And unconsciously, when I did what it said, I paid my dues. We all do. It makes us who we are. And that is not to invalidate any experience that you've had. Because every single experience has served the entire universe at once. It is knowledge from which we gather our understanding and the consequences of the law of cause and effect. Okay? It's like, oh, we did this first and that's the effect. We did this first and that's the effect. And what I'm meeting now is people that are highly intuitive, very psychic, um, able to see behind the veil, and they're all saying the same exact thing, sin. I pretty much can see if I do this this happens if I do that that happens I totally totally see it and whoa there are things like everything in my life I see why it happened and I love that because I had the very exact same epiphany last year myself I remember coming home and and telling uh, telling the person I was with that I figured it out I can pinpoint every last occurrence in my life and pinpoint it back to the first choice I made or where I went with that. Like I can see it. It was like it's like it's like suddenly understanding a whole choose your own ending book. Okay? Um, everybody can do this once they become present to the voice in their head, and that is the most important thing, you guys. Your voice is either dictating your experience or you are dictating it. Sooner or later, we must take off these chains. We must. There's no other way, okay? But once you take off these chains, you enter a different partnership. We are about integrating the ego, not killing it off, okay? And the ego does not mind being your personal assistant. Okay? In fact, your ego has always been your personal assistant. It just doesn't always serve you. All right? But if you understand how the reality works, it can definitely serve you. All right? And it's a very different life when your ego is your personal assistant than when it pretends to be your enemy. Very different life. So, 
hope this helps. I hope this is something that you guys want to consider. And um, I just, you know, like I said, if you become present to that voice, you will be very different. And the only thing that ever needs to be healed is the idea that we are separate from God because God is everything. So you're not separate from anything. You are one with everything that you observe with your eyes. You are one with it, especially because you hold the image in your mind. This is ancient hermetic principle. All is mental. All is mental. <laughs> and once you know that all is mental, nothing can actually hurt your true essence. And you can begin to release yourself from any traumatic events that may have occurred you took the nightmare to an extreme and we all do it but the nightmare has also served us because sooner or later we have to wake up from it and take responsibility for our lives i promise you it's a much better way to exist it's a much better way to exist when we know exactly why things are going to happen and we know what to expect and we're not fooled and we do precognitive things because we can see the future because it's not really the future it's right now and so by the time it hits your 3d experience it is the past of the right now moment you have in your head because you're present you're aware of it so you get to enjoy the present moment even though it's the past okay it's real juice real type of holy juice the kind that Jesus had the kind that all of you have it's universal experience for everybody catch yourself think about it Think about the words that are coming out of your mouth. Think about the things that are the inner voice is saying. Decide whether you want to accept those preferences or not. And remember that that inner voice is the shadow that you are casting. And it is responsible for the way that every human being, every human being, appears not to be you, but is. Because it is your story made real or as Neville says, our inner conversations actualized, okay? I'm not teaching anything that's not biblical, that's not Neville, or that's not anyone that teaches non-duality can explain this this way, I suppose, okay? So, hope that helps. Love you guys. I went for a walk today. I'm feeling all happy and cheerful. <laughs> um, big kisses, and I um, hope, hope you guys are are going to consider coming to my class okay starting on the 26th um, it's going to I think it's gonna make a big impact on people because if you can see behind the veil you are no longer victim to your story and if that's what you're looking to end and if you really want to take control of your life in a whole new different light then consider taking the class all right love you guys bye, -bye.